Welcome to Guns and Ammo Television, and thanks for joining us. We've got a really great lineup for today's show. I'm Craig Boddington. I'm Kyle Lamb. We're going to take a look at the SIG 556R. Some great innovations for a proven platform. And at the range, we're also going to take a look at Ruger's SP-101. Now, that's not a new platform, but this year it's new at 22 and 357. Two great options. During our Tactical Hunter segment, we're going to head to FDW Ranch. Then Craig and I are going to show you how to engage charging targets. And that's just part of today's lineup. Let's get to it. At the Range is brought to you by galleryofguns.com. Tar, this is the pistol that absolutely needs no introduction, the Desert Eagle. This is the pistol that all other pistols aspire to be if they work out a lot. <laughs> absolutely. I've got the blacked out 44 mag with a muzzle brake. You've got the Super Pimp Tiger Stripe Gold and 50 Action Express, no less. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk about your gun first. This is a brand new model from Magnum Research. It has a built-in from the factory muzzle brake on the end. And I'll tell you what, it's a 44 mag, but it is an absolute puppy dog to shoot. Yeah, well, even if you hadn't pointed out that these are Desert Eagles, so many people would recognize them. They have been in, I think, just about every action movie made except the Terminator, and that's only because Terminator came out before these were widely <laughs> available. Now, I've shot these guns, I've, you know, I've seen these guns, but I don't know a lot about them. Am I right that I see it a rotary bolt and a gas piston down here? Here. Right, and if you look at the rotary bolt, it almost looks like an AR-15 it, it bolt. It really does, not quite so many lugs. But. <laughs> right, I mean, the, this gun is big enough that the, it's got rifle-sized parts. It has a rotating bolt, it has dual recoil springs, and it has a gas piston. And the quick change barrel, you can change barrel lengths if you want, they have longer ones for hunting, because I mean, the calibers that they offer them at 357, oh, yeah, absolutely. 44, yeah. and 50 Action Express. And 357 mag too, right? Yeah, 357. And now what I could do with this Picatinny rail is put one of the mini dot sights up here, you know, like a little Trigicon or whatnot, and I, I would feel confident with the accuracy we're getting you know, taking shots at 75 or 100 yards on whitetail size games. Well, and the nice thing about these, not only are they big, heavy guns, but there's a lot of guns, revolvers chambered in these calibers, and they're a lot harder hitting. This, because this is a semi-auto, it absorbs a recoil. It's not going to kill you. Right. You can fire a couple rounds to actually get the thing sighted in and not <laughs> flinch the heck well, off the target. Now, the first Desert Eagles were designed and manufactured in Israel, right? Right, and you can still get the Israeli-made ones, but now Magnum Research is making Desert Eagles 100% in the USA. In fact, in Pillager, Minnesota. <laughs> is that not a great name for a town? The, the most perfect name for a you know, Scandinavian gun company town, what can you say? But the Desert Eagle, an iconic firearm, great for hunting, great for just range bling and looking good why don't you make some more 50 caliber holes in the paper over with, there? with my big rifle size magazine <laughs> the sig 556 r that r stands for russian yes Funny, this doesn't look like an AK. Yeah, it's definitely not an AK. This is our Sig Sauer 556R. Um, it's got a 5 8 by 24 thread, uh, chrome line bore and chamber. Uh, it's got a one and nine and a half twist barrel. So that's pretty accurate twist for that particular it's round. It's a pretty accurate barrel. You know, we air gauge our barrels. It's a, it's a minute and a half, two minute gun. Okay. Um, moving back here, it goes standard with our ambidextrous safety selector. Um, it does ship with a red dot sight. Um, and it t accepts uh, steel AK magazines. Real AK magazines. Real AK magazines. Real 7.62 by 39 yes, magazines. Yep. So you can, if you have an AK, you can use those magazines in this gun. Absolutely. They're abundant. Uh, ammunition's abundant, so. Well, that's uh, a good reason to uh, use this round in this gun configuration. Now, I'm, I'm actually surprised how many people are going into the woods deer hunting now with the AK round. Everybody knows that any MSR, Martin Sporting Rifle, is definitely a hunting tool and to look at this gun and see it as a hunting gun just tells you how far we've come in this country in terms of applications of these guns even though this one does have a folding stock yeah this has a swiss side folding stock uh, so if you need to shorten it up you're able to do that you know i like just about everything about this gun i could even learn to like the r the sig 556 r shoots aka ammunition uses real AK uh, magazines 
and ships with a red dot sight. Cool. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Black Hills Ammunition. When you're doing battle with giants, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Big Game Wednesday, presented by Wild Game Innovations, tonight from 8 to 11, only on Sportsman Channel. Brought to you in part by Flex Tones, Funky Chicken, Wimpy Jake, Decoy, that every gobbler wants to beat up. Experience the new performance standard in varmint bullets and ammunition. What's he shooting at? Oh, no. What? A paper target. Ah, oh, why didn't he use shoot and see like that guy? Shoot and see gives immediate feedback. There's no guesswork. Shoot and see targets give you more bang for your buck. Bullseye. Get shoot and see targets today. Would you look at those targets? Those are the dark hot splattering targets everybody's talking about. Smokehouse, primal cut. Fine print and more. Imagine them downrange. You better get them before they get you. Narcotic. You can you can make a perfect bullet and that'd be awesome. But when you can produce a million perfect bullets, well now you've got something. Glenn wouldn't know how to take a shortcut if he drew him a map. I figured anybody that could spend 22 years taking apart and putting back together B-1 bombers can probably do a good job in ballistics. He's one of the reasons why our product is as good as it is. At Nighthawk Custom, we don't build guns. Our gunsmiths hand sculpt them one at a time. So your custom gun is perfect in every way. And our gunsmiths stake their reputation on it the world's finest custom 1911s and parts. State-of-the-art shotguns. And introducing our signature series, Nighthawk Custom. One gun, one gunsmith. LaserLight, the leader in laser technology, introduces the new Ruger LCP side mount laser. It's compact, it's light, and fits all pocket holsters. Keep the holster you already use. LaserLight also offers a side mount laser that fits nearly all Taurus revolvers, including the Judge. For more innovative products from LaserLight, go to LaserLight.com. That's LaserLight.com. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Kiapa. Not bad, David. Not bad at all. Yeah, comrade. This is kind of an interesting piece. This is, as you know, an IO Inc. STG 2000, which is a clone of the East German Vigor assault rifle. It surely looks different, but behind all this fancy furniture, it's still a good old timeless Kalashnikov design. Absolutely. Uh, basically, uh, before the, the wall came down, the East Germans had done a modernization program for a next generation of assault rifle. They based it on the timeless Kalashnikov, but they improved the ergonomics of the rifle with a longer RPK style buttstock to lengthen uh, the length of pull, a more ergonomic pistol grip, and longer hand guards that are split, kind of like the old M16A1. Definitely, and it, the, the gun has the appearance of uh, something that the NATO soldier would carry. However, this particular gun is chambered in the old Russian caliber, an M43 762 by 39 And it shoots like, you know, a standard Kalashnikov. Very Same simple, controls. very rugged, very reliable. It's accurate. One of the nice things about uh, this particular model is IO Inc. has been building them for a while. And the, the early guns were on the rough side, to be honest with you, but they've worked very hard to improve their quality control. And just like all IO Inc. guns that they build in the Monroe, North Carolina, this particular gun is built in the United States by American workers 
some of the veterans that work at IO Inc. as well as the National Guardsmen. Now I've got to tell you, having the longer stock and the longer forearm is actually pretty nice. I, I, I do like the way that this rifle feels compared to a, a conventional AKM style. Well, I might disagree with you on that one, but uh, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Mark, the SP-101 has been one of my favorite Ruger double actions since the very first Snub Nose 38 version. My question is, why is it taking you so long to come out with a rimfire version? Well, we had a rimfire version before, so it's right. And it, it did have a somewhat longer barrel, and it had an adjustable sight. But frankly, it was a difficult gun for us to manufacture. The sight wasn't all that really adjustable. No, it wasn't. Yeah. And it was discontinued for good reason. But here we are now with the new SP-101 in 22. Well, I really love the balance of the four inch sort of uh, kit gun size sure. uh, 22. I love the fact that it's got eight rounds. I love the really adjustable sight and I really love the fiber optic front. And of course, the classic grip style that's been on the SP-101 since the very beginning. Fits over a grip, uh, grip peg. Grip that, peg. Yeah, right. That, makes it, a, that oh. makes it a wraparound grip. Sure. Which is very cushioning and very comfortable, even though it's only a 22. Which leads me, well, when we put the 22 together, it's such a good looking gun. It balances so well. Why not make the same gun in 357? Because 357 kicks like a mule. Well, this one kicks like a smaller mule. Okay? Like a smaller mule. Sure. We have we have weight forward with this full lug barrel. Okay, Different well, from the half lug yeah, on the well, 22. Well, you don't you don't need a lot of weight forward on a 22, but that will help moderate the recoil. But same nice grip, wrap around grip on the grip peg, so it's comfortable. Same fully adjustable sight. You know, the, the front sight is a square post with a fiber optic notch. You get a crisp sight picture. This Absolutely. is just a great Absolutely. shooting 357. Well, I'm gonna let, 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 me take a, let me take a feel of that thing. Oh yeah, that definitely muzzle forward. I'll, I will imagine that you can really rip off rapid fire with this gun. I really like it. 357 Magnum, 22 Rimfire, the new generation of SP-101. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Laser Light. Introducing Stone Dine Cookware. This new Stone Dine Cookware actually has stone in the coating. So not only is it super tough, but it makes your food taste great. How would you like to cook with no fats and oils, but still keep that gourmet flavor? We know how eggs love to stick to the pan without oils or butters in there, but now there are no fats or oils in here at all. It's a much healthier way for you to cook. Here's the true test of a quality non-stick pan. The first thing I did when I got my stone dine was try the true test, and it passed. There's our egg sliding around like it should in a good non-stick pan. The bacon's all crispy already. Look at the cheese. Up it comes. It sticks to everything but the pan. You could easily pay $100 to $180 for these big European-style pans, but here today, you won't pay anything like that. Plus, if you order a complete set today, we're going to give you an 11-inch pan worth $97 absolutely free. Call 1-800-601-6629. Don't wait. Call now. This is who we are. You get up early, put in a full day, and do things others don't do anymore. It's not just a job. It's a way of life. There's 700 of us, passionate, dedicated Americans, who put our heart and soul into something we're proud to build and people are proud to own. That's not something you take lightly. And that's why we're America's Optics Authority. Experience the new performance standard in varmint bullets and ammunition. The Ruger 1022 Takedown, a new take on the legendary Ruger 1022. 
With all of the features and functionality of America's favorite rimfire rifle, the Ruger 1022 takedown easily separates for convenient storage and transportation. Reassembly is simple and returns the rifle to zero, ensuring precision shot after shot. Packed in a backpack-style bag included with the rifle, the Ruger 1022 takedown makes it easy to keep America's favorite rimfire by your side. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Nosler. Chances are when you're in a gunfight, you're going to have an elevated stress level which increases your heart rate. Jason Teague during our personal defense segment will show us how to deal with that elevated heart rate during a training scenario. Personal Defense is brought to you by Blackhawk. Okay guys, today what we're going to talk about is the importance of endurance training and strength when it comes to your firearms training regimen. What you see here is guys that are going through a PT regimen or a PT test. It's going to incorporate several different aspects of total body fitness. The biggest thing is they're getting their heart rate up. What you're going to see here is a, a, an evolution of different events to get the heart rate up, to use total body strength, to incorporate a little bit of running as well. From this point, we're going to take off, we're going to run into the range, we're going to incorporate some dry fire training with the elevated heart rate, get the heart rates up again, incorporate a little bit of live fire training. What this is going to simulate is the stress inoculation, or get the heart rate up, see what their body does physiologically under elevated heart rate conditions, and learn to train through and work through the, the symptoms that they see, the lack of gross motor skill, the, the shakiness of the muzzle and front sight, things like that. You guys ready? Let's move. All right, guys, make sure we check, double, double check, safe, clear. All right, dry fire only. Watch your threat. Front side, control that trigger. Press to the rear, feel the reset. All right, back to position three, movement drill, ready? Move. All right, fade, scan, check left and right. Holster. Ready, out. Okay, what we've done now is we've stepped it up. We've gone from dry fire practice. We're actually implementing live fire now. Same technique, same drill that you saw before. Going ahead now, we're doing the, the final sort of stress test to get live fire incorporated into this training. Up on the line, up on the line. Three rounds, three rounds. Ready position, watch your threat. Ready position, move. Fade and scan. Holster, snap it in. All right, so what you've seen here again, we've just stepped it up to the next training evolution. We started out with the PT regimen, we incorporated the dry firing, then we stepped it up from there to live fire. Obviously, hits on target are gonna tell us physically where we are as fitness goes. The key thing here, duty, personal carry, civilians, law enforcement alike, stress inoculation is very important. You need to understand physically what your body's gonna do, how you're gonna react in a gunfight, because it's not like it is on a flat range. Get the heart rate up, incorporate the dry fire in your home training. You can do it safely, you can do jumping jacks, jump rope, push ups, something to get the heart rate up, put a target up on a safe backstop, safely dry fire with that elevated heart rate, incorporate that training, make sure that you understand how that body's, or your body's gonna react under stress. In combat, you're always in mortal danger, but when you're hunting dangerous game, you might get a charge. How do you practice for it? Well, we're gonna go to FTW Ranch, and on Tactical Hunter, Kyle Lam and I are gonna take a look at how to practice for a charge. Tactical Hunter is brought to you by Loophole. Craig, I'd like to talk a little bit about optic selection and sight acquisition, and uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, when we get out on the range with these weapons, my sight acquisition with my military weapon is slightly different than if I was carrying a, a double rifle oh, sure. or one of these hunting weapons. So with uh, 
my military weapon. I'm going to start with the muzzle down. I'm still going to drive the weapon up to the target as quick as I possibly can. Then I'm going to slow down and make that shot count. Obviously, you know that. You're a hunter. We want to make every hit count. Uh, same thing's going to happen with this double rifle, but I'm going to start with my muzzle up, quickly snap the weapon onto target, squeeze the trigger, and, and get that good hit. It's kind of interesting these days when I look at the military, very rarely do I see a military person that doesn't have an optic That's on true. their weapon. Yeah, well, and they were late to make the transition. You know, hunters went to scopes back in the 50s wholesale, and the military didn't really make that transition until the 90s, but boy, have they made it now. And, and uh, you know, we still use iron sights for very, very specialized application, but, but the truth is, you know, if, if you're not really practiced with iron sights, they're difficult, right. and you reach a certain age, your eyes can't handle them anymore. So, so there's other options. I mean, the uh, the red dot sights like the uh, RMR, and I mean, you guys use those for for close quarter right. battle too. Uh, the, the red dot sights are useful, and and of course, uh, uh, a versatile. Uh, general purpose hunting scope is, is really a lot different than a dangerous game scope. A, a dangerous game scope for close encounter is going to be something like this Trigicon 1 to 4. It, uh, it uh, uh, has a very, very low range of, of variability, but uh, uh, a good wide field of view for, for fast target acquisition at close quarters. It's really, it's right. a lot like a tactical scope. Yeah, and this is the Leopold Mark 6 1 to 6, right. so on the bottom end, I've got a great field of view. I can dial up the dot and have a super, super bright dot. And then if I've got a targeted distance, I can come up to come up to six power. And it's also a front focal plane scope, so my reticle mm -hmm. size never changes in, in respect to the target. So it's good for ranging and things like that as well. So my holds are always, uh, they always work no matter what the power. It really doesn't matter whether it's a close encounter with a, a bad animal or, or a bad guy. The idea is fast target acquisition, whatever yeah. that means to you. Yep, absolutely. Snap the weapon onto target, Yep. slowly squeeze the trigger, and make that hit count. Absolutely. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Ruger. Steven Ranella just won the lottery for one of the world's most coveted tags. There's Rams above us. The elusive, reclusive doll sheep in Alaska's wild Toke River country. There he is. And this tough high country hunt comes with a high grade reward. One of the Rams might very well be legal. Steak cake. An epic two part special. All new Meat Eaters, Sunday at 9 on Sportsman Channel. I'm Ty Jarrett, world champion. I choose Blackhawk. I'm Officer Jason Smith, and I choose Blackhawk. I'm Turbo, United States Navy SEAL, and I choose Blackhawk. I'm Officer Steve Deckard, and I choose Blackhawk. Do you like your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? At galleryofguns.com, you can search thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory, find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes, and buy hassle-free. There's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun is covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. It's just that easy. Introducing the My Dip Kit, America's first do-it-yourself dipping kit. Now you can camouflage your hunting equipment at home just like the pros. Pro shops too expensive? New equipment? Out of the question? Don't trade up. Get the My Dip Kit today. You can apply a variety of patterns to everything from hunting equipment to hard hats. Get the My Dip Kit today at TimbersEdgeCamo.com. Warning, have you or a loved one taken the blood thinner Pradaxa for atrial fibrillation? The FDA is evaluating serious side effects from taking the drug Pradaxa, such as internal bleeding in the brain, kidneys or intestines, stroke, kidney failure, heart attack, and even death. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner Pradaxa and had a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to compensation. Call 888-491-7888. That's 888-491-7888. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Nighthawk. 
The Terry carbine was designed by the Brits, but there was a lot of cool innovation there that led some of our Confederate folks to carry that weapon. Jeb Stewart and Jeff Davis, just a couple that come to mind. Let's go to Classic Test and see why. Classic Test is brought to you by Kiapa. Now, one of the exciting things about spending time with Gary James and his library is you just never know what you're going to run across. And in this case, we managed to dig out something that I've never even handled before, and that's a Terry carbine. Now, while this is a fascinating British design, Calvary carbine has a very interesting link to American history. Yeah, right, exactly. The, the Kalisher and Terry uh, was originally a British issue gun. As a matter of fact, this particular one is British issue. It uh, has the crown and dated 1865. But lots of these were sold. Uh, to civilians, and the Confederacy bought some. As a matter of fact, Jeb Stewart had one, and uh, when Jefferson Davis was captured, President Jefferson Davis, he also had a Terry carbine. As a matter of fact, both those guns can be seen today in the Museum of the Confederacy. Now, the reason why in a cavalry officer like Jeb Stewart would be interested in the Terry is because it has a really unique method of operation, doesn't it? Like the Dreis, it is a bolt action. It's a real early bolt action. It's not the first. There were others, like you say, the Dreiza, and, and uh, I think the green probably predated it. But this one's fascinating. As a matter of fact, the Confederates called it the door bolt gun. And it's pretty obvious the, uh, why. You just open the bolt this way, pull it back, and uh, then you can insert a cartridge. Now, it was a special cartridge. The cartridge uh, had the bullet and the powder charge, and then there was a big greased felt wad on the back. And you loaded that in there and closed it back up again. Um, it would push the cartridge forward, you'd cock it and cap it, and when it fired, that wad would seal the breech. So that you didn't get gas blow by out through the side exactly. and in your face. Exactly. I, and I have had it happen with some uh, improperly made cartridges, my own fault in the past. Matter of fact, I'm permanently tattooed on this hand because of it. But when it works properly and when the cartridges are made right, it works quite well. As a matter of fact, what you did, then you put the next cartridge through, and that greased wad would actually lubricate the bore. So uh, it was uh, fast uh, and reliable and uh, not a bad little carbine. As a matter of fact, they were used uh, all over the world. Uh, a lot of them went to the colonies. Um, lots of Terry carbines turn up in, in New Zealand, for instance. Uh, but uh, they're a highly collectible gun today in both civilian and military form. Now, the question that I have for you, though, Gary, is how does it stack up to its peers. It's a very interesting design, but really, I mean, uh, one to ten, what would you give it? Well, uh, would I rather have this than a Sharps? No. Would I rather have this than a uh, uh, Burnside? No. Would I rather have this than a Maynard? No. I mean, it has some advantages, but it's, it's got some fiddly stuff going on with it. So, but, you know, compared to other Civil War carbines and even some other British period carbines at the time, um, I'd give it a 4.4, 4.5. Uh, good gun, interesting gun. Uh, would I take it in battle? There's others I'd rather have. Kyle, that SIG 5.56 looks like a really sweet shooting rifle. Yeah, the Desert Eagle, it's made famous by the movies, but it's a pretty cool handgun. <laughs> it is. It's an awesome handgun, but it's a real handful. I was really interested in the Terry Carbine. Uh, Jefferson Davis was a distant cousin, but I never knew what he carried. Really? Yeah. Well, hey, folks, it's great that you came out for the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out GunsAndAmmo.com and also pick up an issue of Guns and Ammo magazine at the local news rack. And we'll see you at the range. Closed captioning is brought to you by True Glow.